Welcome to the Off the Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. I'm Bud. And that's it. This is our show. We actually only have three guests tonight, or three of us on. Like the last episode that will air had four, five, six people that were on mic at one point. So yeah, that was a big one. Much, yeah, that's much. Been, that actually sounds annoying. All everybody talking over each other. I promise you, I'm not going to let you down. I'll talk enough shit for <laughs> three people. It's fun. <laughs> Well, my brother and I good. were drunk on that one, yeah, so yeah, we were the ones just talking, and everybody else was just listening to us act like fools. Yeah, I had to uh, update the show notes because we spent so much time talking about a 2016 Ram Rebel that I felt yeah. like I had to reference it ahead of time. Yeah. I, uh, well, good. The good news is we never have to talk about that truck again. So, and yeah, at least till the next time uh, Spencer shows up on the show. Yeah. Uh, as always, we're socially distanced. We've been, we've literally been doing it since before it was mandated because that's the only way we can record our show. So uh, I'm still in Kansas City, Ross on the East Coast, and Bud's on the West Coast. So we're back spread out everywhere again. Yes. It feels normal now. Right. Back to reality. And we have no international guests tonight, which is also helping. Uh, it's weird to watch somebody drink coffee while everyone else is drinking beers. I didn't know we no. could drink. I have a beer. I can drink beer. I have a you're beer. Absolutely, you're allowed to. Uh, yeah, hell yeah. <laughs> your Sometimes, rules apply. Though, there are occasional instances when you can drink both coffee and beer at the same time. That's yeah. That's we call it's it, usually uh, more like Red Bull or something though. We called it kegs and eggs when we were in college. Kegs and eggs. Okay. <laughs> kegs and eggs worked yeah. out very well. We just call them breakfast beers. <laughs> that that works too. Uh, so there's actual off road and four by four news. Actually, a shit ton. Like, oh, literally, the there's been a dam and it has broken. And it's not just like one manufacturer. There was actually more than one, even. Like, mm-hmm. uh, so we should we should start 20, 2021 Raptor. Yes. I yes. Had to look. Yeah. It, 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 they were they were lying about the V8. I, they were all teasing us about V8. I'm not, I'll tell you my story when I I well we'll get into it later. But I I kept on being told right because the original Raptor came out, which I was gonna buy. And it was like, a, it was, a, you know, it was a five, six. They're like, no, no, wait till the six, two, wait till the six, two. And then I don't know. I think, I think I had a baby or some random shit like that, that I couldn't. <laughs> it's like you, it's like you not being able to cut your hair. You magically can't buy a $5,000 off-road toy when you, when you pop out a kid. So I didn't do it. And then it went, it went into the six cylinder world. And then I was kind of told by a couple of reliable sources that it's coming back. It's coming back. And then this morning it didn't. It came, it came back as the, I mean, it's still badass, as you said, but it's not. It's, for now, for now. Yeah, for now. So it, you just I have mean, to wait one more year to get the V8. Yeah. One more. Is that what they said? 20, yes. 2022? Yeah. Mike Levine confirmed it himself. So I, I he's hopefully a good, reliable. If he's not the one saying, you know, what's what, then I don't know who is. But who the hell's Mike Levine? He's the head of Ford Trucks. Ford Trucks, yeah. Oh, okay. Well, that'll do it. <laughs> but if you, he, if, there's, if you get like, on Twitter a little bit, you can definitely talk to Mike Levine. <laughs> no, I, a, I know most of the guys over at Ford. I don't, I don't know Mike Levine. Sorry, now he's going to be yelling at me. Sorry. <laughs> Send him an email. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Mike, if you're listening, love to talk Raptor. But I think no, my, so, my favorite thing ever is I, I think I have his cell phone. Like, I think he oh, he just it. tuned out, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> right, right, yeah, right exactly. Out. Yeah, he just said, okay, these guys are idiots. Sorry. Block all numbers. <laughs> Block. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, new Raptor. I mean, it's everything we expect. It's a Raptor. Um, 37s can get 37s from the factory, which is a huge tire for a, a factory vehicle. I, I thought the 35s on the Bronco were big. You're going to get 37s? 37s. And there, I, By the way, that's a lot. I mean, I raced 35s. I raced 33s, 35, and 37s for BFG. I raced that tire. I, I was one of the development road drivers on that tire. Uh, and it is a big tire and it's heavy. I mean, I used to pride myself back in the day, not too long ago, throwing those things around and they just keep on getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And, and they got away with like what, like 75, 80 pounds each. I don't know if they're that heavy. I, I mean, we used to, we used to be able to pick them, I mean, play with them and, and roll them around, but yeah, that's the, uh, that should be the KO2 or KO3 all terrain. Um, so badass. I had, uh, I had KM2s on one of my forerunners and they were 34s and they were like, 66 pounds yeah nasty and when you when you're training for baja and you do stuff you just gotta you just gotta try to play with it. you pick it up and you gotta pull it off the rack, <laughs> throw it all around and yeah it's kind of crazy am i gonna be able to toss this somewhere in the middle of the desert <laughs> yeah because that that matters in baja <laughs> i didn't download the uh press photo that has the 37 package on the truck though i've got to go get that real fast it's a lot of um, meat because it's the same wheel size just with 
an extra two inches of sidewall. Yeah, but like, did you see the the like branding package that's on it? No. Oh, Do I want to? Come on, Chris. Are they are they are the are the red and um red and blue letters sidewall letters or are they just white? So no 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 that it's be, uh it's not good. the sidewall letters to the tire on the on the trucks. Um, if you go to 37s, there's a 37 graphics package. Ah, uh, um, dude, that's that, like when you used to, you know, 15 years ago, you'd have the huge chrome dub thing on the side of the car with like the 27. Exactly, you know? it's exactly similar to the. Oh man, they, they have the BF Goodrich logo over the fender, like they make you put in the race cars. No, just the 37 though. Not none of the actual like real branding that you would get on like a race truck. Ooh, um, man. and I knew I wanted to get this, and I definitely fucked it up by not having you're slacking a little bit but that's right i have a beer so we're okay (laughs) all right let's talk about good shit what do you guys want to talk about here we go i got the 37 Woo! oh wow that didn't take any time all right so it literally says 37 on the fender behind the rear tire and and it's it's in a couple other places i think too like it it was like up on the hood or like it's the 37 package or whatever wait a minute go back to that uh okay hold on where to go? Did you, is that is that a point to point map of the Baja Peninsula on the rear fender? Ooh, it definitely might be. Yeah, it looks like a point to point. I mean, it looks like because that's where all the BF Goodrich stops are. Mm-hmm. That kind of looks like a point to point of yeah, Ensenada to Loreto or Ensenada to uh, La Paz. Which is that's really cool. I really like that they did that because shit, everybody does that. Jeep does the topographic maps on every special edition they do. So that's really cool because they actually run these things in Baja, well, and, but the 37 number on the back I don't yeah. know, is it supposed to look like a race number it's well, just like a random on the door. Door. yeah it's just like a random it looks like a random and i do like the topo thing because what they did last time is it and i remember i was in the design meeting in 2008 and i'm not shitting on bruce bruce is an amazing designer the guy who designed the raptor and the graphic packet but it literally was like a i don't know like a uh, it, I don't know. It's hard to shit. It's like a 1990s snowboard graphic with that kind of torn thing. Where yeah, like, exactly. Very it looked like so. the Raptor claws had ripped it in there. Um, but this topo that they put on there, that's a whole topo graph. And if they did it down the Baja Peninsula, which is kind of what it looks like, I have that same map. Um, that's pretty badass. Based on like the other lines around it, I'm not sure. But that's those are topo. That's a topographical map. Yeah, definitely topo. But you're right. You're based on those. That that doesn't look like a, uh, a Baja Peninsula, except for the Baja Peninsula is full of mountains, which not many people know. I can't. So, no, what other like two pages? And that was the closest one. There's another 37 <laughs> on the tailgate too. Ew. I love the Raptor, but that's just. <laughs> it, but by the way, they look vinyl. I think you just peel those damn things off. Oh, I definitely sure. would. Yeah, hundred yeah. percent. Especially once you go to like 38s. <laughs> Once you go to 39 and put the bead locks on, then yeah, you can use. Put I them. will. I am going to give Ford props though, because this is just a, I don't have OCD, but this is something that drives me insane in press photos. The Ford is perfectly flat on the wheel. So is the Baja champion. Yeah. Like they, the, but the Ford name now, in the middle of the that. wheel, that center cap is perfect. Like that drives me nuts when they're not right. It's We're, not. It's, no, it's not perfect. That's not clock perfect. It's, it's no, it's not. It's yeah. It's I, tilted a little tilted bit. A little. I, I think we're, we're let's talk about that photo. Let me talk about that photo because that's okay. uh, I, I point this out to people and they don't understand it. So, uh, I was involved with a bunch of that too. Because see, see the Baja champion. Do you know why they can put that on there? Because BF Goodrich has won Baja before. No, no, that's not true. I mean, yes, they have many, many times. <laughs> so they have a ton of times. <laughs> that was too obvious. That's, <laughs> that's that, yeah, that's the dumb answer. Okay, so Bud walked me into it. <laughs> the good, <laughs> the good is softball. Yeah, have you seen my baseball? Uh, <laughs> the good answer is that that actual tire has won Baja. So we run those tires on um, wide open classes and class seven classes and different type of classes. So I know for, you know, the 35s and 37s, I'm not sure about that particular one, but I know it has to win the race in a KO2, class. the designated KO2 tire, right? right. That not, tire. Just, not just BFG saying. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Not the Baja All Terrain, the, you know, the, not the Super mm-hmm. Wazoo race tire that's on the on the trophy trucks. Yeah. No, that tire has been developed and built, and I did mud trains. I mean, I did it for ten years for BF Goodrich, and and I know of, there's a bunch of tires that are, run, are running out there that where they put Baja Champion because we won the race 
and that tire won the race and they stamped that on the side. They don't do that with any, you know, they don't do that with any like, oh, this is a good branding idea. <laughs> right. So that's really cool that that tire goes through. I mean, and I've taken people down there. I'm going down like next month, but I've taken people down there and they first thing they walk away was like, I can't believe what that tire can do. And I don't, I'm not, I don't, I'm not an employee of BF Goodrich. It's just, it's just a cool thing. Mm-hmm. Well, you're, you're talking to two people that still consider the KO2 the best off-road tire that we can find. It's so. pretty dude. Uh, e- Even though I just put Toyos on my truck. Uh, yeah. What a dirtbag. <laughs> it's the brand new AT3, and I've actually been really happy with them. The only <clears throat> noticeable difference I can tell right now is on the highway at speed, noise slightly louder. Not a lot of noise, but just like the KO... Now, and the hard thing is I'm comparing the KO2s I had on my 94 Land Cruiser, which is going to have more noise because it's built in 1994 versus the 2008 Sequoia that I put them on the other day. So can you actually hear it over the Taylor Swift you're cranking? <laughs> Jack <it>. Johnson. <laughs> uh, <laughs> not really. And the truck nuts slapping against the back of the thing. Uh, there, there will never be <laughs> truck nuts on my vehicle. I can promise you that. Uh, oh, know. I gotta, I'm trying to get to the picture of it. I'm not, oh, I'm slow tonight. Come on. I'm, I'm not. <laughs> yeah. The truck nest reference is quick. So <laughs> there you go. There it is. Is that your uh, truck? That's my truck. That's my, so uh, you weren't far off with the kid comment earlier. I have four of them. So I drive a small school bus. Holy um, shit. Yeah. So 12, 12 to two and a half and they're all spaced out in between. So uh other than a going the only thing i could go bigger is like a suburban or like a, an actual full-size van so um i've been really happy with the sequoia so far don't do a van van is crazy <laughs> van the, is the people that wheel the vans are also crazy yeah like those people those people are actually kind of nuts um but no i uh i swapped over i had like 20 inch wheels on it uh and so i i went and found some 18s from a tundra the glory of the sequoia is almost anything that fits the tundra will also fit the sequoia I just want to let everybody know that your your center caps, the Toyota logo in your center caps. Are not <laughs> I just want to it point also out, for an alleged man who has OCD, you can't even take your own fucking picture, right? <laughs> exactly. It also does not say Baja Champion on those tires. No, it doesn't. <laughs> yeah. It does not say Baja Champion, but but they do a lot. I mean, Toyo has stepped up a lot lately in Baja, and they do a lot of stuff. I mean, they've obviously been. Um, sponsoring and packing a lot of the big racers i mean almost every single noteworthy racer they have under their brand now so i mean mm-hmm. they've been kicking ass and you know bryce menzi just won uh the ko that uh, king of the hammer in the, in the in the tt division so yeah they're uh toyo really steps it up those guys are doing an amazing job down there yep. yeah i like them a lot so far so <laughs> plus it it was a bit of a saga swapping over from the 20s to the 18s and then having the current fun like Tire sponsorship sounds like it might be the most amazing sponsorship of any actual like sponsorship when it comes to off-road. The ability to just call and say, hey, I need four tires now and just have them show up. Like as if there's anything I strive for in life, it's a tire sponsorship. Mm-hmm. It doesn't really work that way, but yeah, they allocate certain right. race yeah. tires to, to teams <laughs> and stuff like that. But it, I mean, listen, I, I'm sponsored by BF Goodrich and I think they're absolutely amazing. And it, and it kind of, I've, you know, been very fortunate for 12 years or 13 years or something like that. But yeah, it does happen. I mean, we're, we're on performance team and tires show up. It's cool that way. Right. Yeah. It's the best thing ever. So, uh, finish up on the Raptor, the, the 2021 that's coming, we're stepping in with the twin turbo V6, uh, EcoBoost. The horsepower numbers didn't really jump. Ross, did you type in one pedal drive? Yeah, they're doing the, they have a one pedal drive mode. So for slow off-roading, rock crawling, you can use the gas pedal as brake and gas. So it, it changes the programming so that when you're on the gas, it's gas pedal. When you let go of the gas, it serves as a brake. So it's kind of like regenerative braking in you know, an electric car, but in this application, I mean, I'm sure the first time anybody does it is going to be like slamming back and forth like they don't know how to drive stick. But I can see it being pretty, you know, pretty handy actually on like on more difficult rocks. So it's like the one pedal driving that like I've I've ever done with like a side by side on a farm. You only use one pedal. Yeah, as soon as you lift the gas and then you just keep pressing the gas. Yeah. If you want to go fast, yeah, you, you don't hit the brake in the side by side, but you, but unfortunately, you lost me at the slow rock crawling, whatever shit that is. 
Like, I'm, not, I'm on the East Coast. That's all we got here. We don't have fast off road here. Show me the jackass who's taking his his brand new Raptor out rock crawling. They're and, not, yeah. dude. No, what was? Yeah. I promise you, they're not. There was there was like Ford did a press drive like probably two or three years ago, and that's all they did for the entire press drive. And I th- I think Jeff wrote for Hooniverse who wrote something about it because they they had Raptors in Utah, and all they did was rock crawl. Dude, it's annoying. I was out when I, I recently, where was, I? oh yeah, I did it out in a, I was out in Atlanta and um, we, we did, you know, Jeep crawling and we le- le- legitimately had, I think it was a, yeah, it was a Jeep and you had a tennis ball on your dash. You had to keep the tennis ball on your dash and you had to do all this wacky rock crawling. I was bored out of my fucking mind. <laughs> yeah. But I'm a fast, I like, I like going fast through the desert. I don't, you know, listen, right. I know that. You guys are pretending on the East Coast. You guys don't fast or you don't go fast, but there's no, like, Small we just doses. don't have the space. Like, and that's sad because I live in Kansas to say I Kansas? don't have, yeah, but everything's some guy's farm. So it's not that big of a ticket. Just go for it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I got news for you, jackass. In Mexico, we we're, it's some guy's farm too, right? <laughs> that's, that's also Mexico. <laughs> But we, they're, no, but they're amazing. Though. They make a deal and they understand. Yeah, exactly. It's part score, of the culture. Yeah. Score writes a check to that guy's farm. <laughs> like, I'm not writing a check to that guy's farm. It's like yeah, what we do here for fracking. They do down there for Baja. Same thing, yeah. Our, our version of fracking is with a trophy. <laughs> I don't know what the Mexican word for fracking is, but I have to come up with one because that's pretty damn funny. Please, <laughs> please let it be fracto. Uh, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> It's like everything else with the Spanish when they go Spanglish. Um, there was a spy shot of the Ford Bronco Heritage Edition. And of course, I didn't look it up ahead of time. You mean the, the uh, um, Ultra 4 one? Not the Ultra 4. There's... Uh, that's there's, awesome. Then there's, Ultra 4. The Ultra 4 is great. And that's where I'm going right after this. Um, they're going to do a... Podcast is this? Sorry. Oh, my gosh. Yeah. Um, so the heritage edition is basically supposed to be just a money printer. Pretty much. It's is literally, it, is it gold or is it blue and blue and white or blue and red or what is it? It right now well, it's, it's camo. very camouflaged. So, and of course the one I opened up is the least resolution image ever. <laughs> like um, 340 by 340. Yeah. Ah, yes. So it's going to be retro styled wheels. And then it's going to have like the, the first generation of classic Bronco where they always had like the white grill and it was a mainly horizontal uh, with some vertical lines in it. Um, that's what we're, you, you could be make your modern Bronco look like an old Bronco. Yeah. But the paint's got to be either two-tone white top with it, with a, you know, pastel yeah, shitty on exactly. the bottom or they'll do red and blue, which is under Bill Strop. So they'll do the Oli for uh, Parnelli. They're going to cash in on everything. They should. Yeah, that's yeah, awesome. And they should. I mean, yeah, if you... they, I mean, by the way, they, they missed the Jeep market. They were head to head the Jeep market in the 60s and then they missed it completely. And now they got a hell of a lot of catch up to do. <laughs> Jeep, right. Jeep was crushing them. Doing the Please opposite of what okay. Chevy had to do with the Camaro after they dumped it in 02. Yeah. I said, oh, Ford's still selling those things. I got a better resolution image. Those so. look like K no, no, those those are, uh, there's a good year. Yeah, those are good years. Remember, it's the good year, good years. Oh, right. On the, the Bronco. Yeah, for the Bronco. They can't write the word Wrangler on the tire. That would be sacrilege. Uh oh, those are good years, good years, right? Yeah, the good year, good years. Yeah. Uh, but so you in this image, you can actually see the wheel. It, it's you the, the, yeah, you can absolutely see. Sorry to interrupt you. You can absolutely see the. Uh, I just got excited for a second. It doesn't happen that often. You can see the grill through that little opening. You right. Can see the, the grill. That's badass. Yeah, that'll be cool. So, uh, Bud, a little background. I used to work at LMC Truck like years ago, and this was the only vehicle that I cared about was early Broncos with with that grill. Like I didn't maybe a square body suburban, but this was like. And they they were so rare. Like we would sell like a handful of parts for them, but then everybody else would have like their square body Chevys. Like we would just print money anytime we built anything for those trucks. But I love I love the early Broncos. If they really wanted to do a heritage edition, it would be two door only. Just looking at the picture of the four door like that, it, it's yeah. just. But Ross, you're forgetting they want money. I know. I was gonna say they're not getting my money on this thing, so <laughs> I, I, my opinion doesn't matter at all. <laughs> that's because you don't have four fucking kids that's why i have no kids, kids currently and uh <laughs> yeah and i also don't have 55 or sixty thousand dollars to spend on a on a bronco so okay you guys are promoting the podcast all right what's next on the podcast <laughs> uh 
You said Ultra Four, right? Ford Bronco yes. Ultra Four. Please. That thing is so badass. One day Seriously. ago. Is that I also don't... EcoBoost or is that? Um, my friends on the development team. I mean, all my friends are on the development team. Brad Lovell's racing it right now. Look at that. Oh, dude, that's heaven. There's two doors for you, bitch. <laughs> that's, no, that's just that sits absolutely perfect. Look at that thing. It's uh, the approach angle on that skid plate is so yes. fucking great. Yeah. Um, that skid plate by itself is gnarly. Like it's so yeah. everything. They, I mean, I don't like troll arms sit perfectly flat too. Yeah, I don't like the trans cooler that uh, front there, but that's a whole other issue. As I said, yeah. there needs to be a little girl there. Yeah, something. Um, yeah, the roll bar, two door, um, everything about it. I mean, it's a lot different than the, the Bronco R that we the race and launched at our race. Um, and my friend Brad Level has, has been developing and pushing that. He's racing it this week. Uh, from the back, it's good too. Oh, that thing is really, it's very really cool. Very clean. Oh my God. Yeah, it's so good. See, two door. See, they make yeah. it. That's coming methods. out, dude. That's two doors. It's so good. It's so good. Yeah, and those are 39s, maybe? 37s? Those are big. That's I a bet big those are fucking tire. They gotta be 37s. I think is that a KM3? Is that that's a BFG, right? Because it's yeah, a that's truck. A, but that's a so mud that's a KM3. That's a, that's a mud tire, yeah. Yeah. That's not an all-terrain, that's a mud tire. No, that's KM3. See, I kind of know, I kind of halfway know what I'm <laughs> I don't to like it. By the way, for the for the record, I don't like the mud tires. They drive me nuts. I raced them a bunch of times, and it's just so much. First time I raced them, they switched. Frank D'Angelo, who I know you had on the show, was like, he, I, "We brought down the Baja, and he was like, we're gonna have, we're gonna race this brand new tire, and it's the greatest tire we've ever done." Blah blah blah. And then I'm like, "Okay, so we get on the race course, and I throw it into a corner, and I literally, I just have to learn to drive the tire. I swear to God, I slide all the way through the fucking corner, and I'm like." What the hell was that? Because I'm used to the all terrains. The all terrains bite really good. When you can throw, you can throw a car any speed into the corner. That thing will side bite and drag you through it. It was much the mud tire. No, no. I mean, it was just open channels like I was on slicks. Did it roll? <laughs> did the sidewall roll, or did it just? They just couldn't get grip on the actual tread, and it just pushed. No, no. It wasn't pushing. No, it would just slide. The trick. Huh. The trick on that particular one, you go into the corner, you got to power out, you got to rotate hard and get out of it, and then you just dig your dig yourself out of it. But I was used to the alter. I raced for the all-terrain for four or five years, and in the same car, in the same vehicle. So I'm like, okay, I'm just going to jam it into this corner, throw it in the corner. I'm like, whoosh, which all the way slide. I'm like, what was that? So I did it a couple more times. I'm like, okay, it's not me. And then I started to learn that tire. Like, okay, now if I do this and I nail the throttle before I get to the outside of the turn, I'll pull myself through it. I had to learn how to race that tire because it was just, yeah, I didn't like them. For down there, I didn't like them. I like an all-terrain, racing on an all-terrain. I mean, it, make, it makes sense. I love so, all of that. What, what else can we talk about with the, uh, with the race prep Bronco other than it's it looks awesome. amazing? Yeah. I'm ready to watch videos of it jumping. <laughs> same i think everybody is kate king of hammers is going on right now right yep right now everybody just kept calling we were texting i just talked to ryan and a couple other guys and and, and uh, andrew hendrix and some other guys that are racing down there qualifying was what yesterday two days ago yeah i think it was yeah yesterday i think it was yesterday somebody posted oh man i gotta find it hammer town um somebody posted a picture of a supposedly it was a, on a tacoma um at King of Hammers, and it had turbo fans, and it was the cheapest tire I've ever seen. Um, that was like wrapped. I didn't really Doesn't believe it. Um, oh man, I'm searching, searching. Oh yes, thank you, Twitter, for being the first thing. These are horrible. Phrase I've never said before. Yeah, thank you, Twitter. I never. I, I, I exactly hate. right. Like it actually came up. So oh, dude, that's like Death Race 2000. Is that? Yeah. <laughs> that's Death Race 2000. That's <laughs> awesome. My favorite part is my friends at King of the Hammers and sent me this picture from a decades-old stock Tacoma with these wheels on it. And Come there's on. actually a picture from the outside, too. Like, dude, that's... <laughs> oh, well, wait. That is fucking awesome. <laughs> Hold on. That is awesome. Like, it's a turbo fan. Like, it's amazing. And on a highway tire at that. Like, Looks like a homebrew turbo fan. <sighs> That is, that is, that is, I don't, I can't even describe that. That's, that's horrifying. It's something. It's, it's something at a Robocop. I'm trying to look for like <laughs> shitty Robocop, you know, the shitty. Robocop Taurus. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> oh, God. Terrifying. If that does anything to the aerodynamics at like 85 miles per hour, 
Sure. Can't help. It and it looks like it's on like a pre-runner Tacoma because there wasn't any ground clearance there. Like no. Rear wheel drive only Just Tacoma. Drive. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. No, thank you. Nice. Uh the other news today. Famous stuff. Not really. It was the most unanticipated releases ever, I would say. They teased it every day for the last like week. What are you talking about? The Nissan. brand new Frontier. Yeah, don't give a fuck. See, yeah. this is the Go weird part it. of the website we work for is because we actually care about this because we think the Tacoma is a little overrated. Okay. And so it's a slightly larger, more comfortable alternative. It looks like you put the Tacoma on the copier and then the ink fucked up printing it out. Well, I also think they want like plus size 12% and then hit copy. Is no, it actually it, bigger than the Tacoma? I, I think know. Frontiers are always a little bit bigger, aren't they? I don't think so. I think they're all trying to do that. They're all trying, you know, they follow Ford styling. They follow all kinds of stuff and the bigger, better. And I think, you know, the, the Japanese car companies, you know, caught on. It's like, okay, bigger is better. And they have these big, really heavy, beefy front ends and shit on it. But yeah, they don't really have it. Yeah, so, I mean, the last Frontier was fine it was out for you know it was 16 a truck years. it was a truck the engine was good it actually made good sound and had good power uh, but this is the same frame with some mild changes uh the gearbox that they put in it last year and the new interior and new body and, and over everybody's... over 300 horsepower now over 300 horsepower so Ooh, they joined the club yeah mercury uh, great <laughs> I, I don't know everybody's like, it's not like if everybody. it's not 600, I'm not getting out of bed. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, someone just sent me the, uh, uh, I think it was the Blackwing Cadillac that just came out. Uh, and yes. I, I'm, a, I'm a Cadillac guy and I saw that thing and I'm like, oh shit, I gotta. Like, <laughs> ah. mm -hmm. Controversially, yeah. we'll talk about cars real quick. I think the prior V cars, so the actual V cars before they started calling them CT5 V Blackwing, I think those looked better. I think obviously the new interior and all that is going to be better, but I think they had a little more aggression. Uh, the old that one? said, the old ones, the, the one that just went out of production like last year. Yeah, I've owned three of them. Um, oh wow, okay. <clears throat> I've owned three V's, and actually, I, I think I woke up one day and this had that maybe it wasn't. It was like three, four years ago. I was like, I don't, I, 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 I mean, it's very fun going on the on ramps in LA, and then you just got to slow down for traffic. And I was, I finally came to the realization that I don't need 700 horsepower in my daily driver back and forth. <laughs> That's valid. At all, right? I've had three uh, CTSVs, STSVs, V series. I, I was, I first got one early on. I was doing a bunch of stuff with GM and I, I got one super early and I got an early, early V. It was like, oh my God. Like an 0405? Yeah, it was so okay. ridiculous, like so ridiculous. Um, but that looks, I mean, that, I like that. I mean, I, I'm, I'm fairly nervous for myself. And by the way, for your you just got to think about how amazing this is, right? We're, we're, we're contemplating, at least I am. I'm not sure about you guys. You got four kids and you're single and you live in <laughs> fucking. Married, but yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm contemplating, you know, is it Bronco, New Raptor or Cadillac? I'm trying to figure out which one I want to buy right now. Because they're so badass. Yeah. T Rex doesn't make the list. Uh, no, 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 they're not Mexico. Yeah. I I'm okay with that because I don't. I think it's too over the top. So. <laughs> yeah. No, T Rex is not my. Plus, thing. it's like ninety. Well, yeah, some of the Raptors are now. I, I looked at you know it's funny is I looked at a shell. I looked at a Shelby Raptor just to be a dick for a couple minutes, and I just <laughs> I couldn't do it either. <laughs> it's like, and I drove one. I drove one in the mountains of, of uh, Colorado. And the turbo lag and all my all my love and respect to my friends at Shelby, but the turbo lag and the, the supercharger, whatever the fuck it was, I, I think a supercharger was just too much. I couldn't make, I just that pulling the throttle off, throwing. stabbing the throttle, going through the corners. I'm like, what the hell is this? The guy's like, like, if I'm going to give the Raptor crap for 37s, mm -hmm. I definitely have to give Shelby Raptor crap for how many times it says Shelby Raptor on the truck. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Times. One, two, three. I can count three just from one angle. And oh, you know yeah. it's on the other side too. Yeah, no, it's and all the interior over the, and under the hood. It's all over that thing. That thing's yeah. a yeah, that thing's, and that that to me is just too much. I mean, I love Shelby. Shelby's are amazing, but I just you know that that marketing exercise is just okay. Yeah, that's it's because they can. That's it. Yeah.
Yeah, I mean, Brother Roush does the same thing too. I'm not sure I would do a Roush. I'm not. I'm okay doing a Roush Mustang, and I'm definitely okay doing a Roush F-150. But then I take an you know an awesome platform, which is Raptor, which is already fucking wazoo, and you're gonna slap another performance name on it. But I mean, it. I don't think you can combine though. I'm not gonna buy a Shelby McLaren or a, you know <laughs> something like that. <laughs> What if they have, there was that company a couple of years ago doing like tri turbo setups on the McLarens and they kind of vanished. Oh, Remember that? Yeah. What was that company? They were making, they're like 1100 horsepower or something on race gas. Well, Hennessy does that. My friend, my friend, John Hennessy does that. Yeah. But he, that's different. I mean, the third party, the third party outfitter like that, who does like, 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 okay, if you want to be stupid and you want to do Velociraptor level, then okay, go do that. But I don't, you know, I wouldn't buy, I'd buy a Shelby Mustang. I, mean, I have, a, you know, I think they were called Three Hypercar, cars. Ross. They Hy- were just Hypercar. called Hypercar? Yeah, I think so. That's All not right. very right. inventive. Because they have an 800, <laughs> 800 horsepower package, 1,000 package, 1,200 package, 1,500 plus package. Okay. That's, yeah, that's enough. Um, yeah, it's uh, awesome. Okay, so wait, I want to talk about V cars real quick because I grew up in like around the GM. I'll talk about CTSV world. wagons. So you had a first gen and then was there a second gen? So my very, let me just remember, because I got it from the, I, I was on like some kind of employee plan and I got the 600 horsepower. I always have four doors. I don't, I, don't, I didn't get the two door, you know, okay. I didn't get the two door. I had, always had the four doors. So I had the first, yeah, definitely had, the, I definitely had the first gen, like $95,000 or whatever it was. It was unbelievably fast and great. Mm-hmm. And it wasn't the two door seat. Uh, that's a CTSV. Wrong color? Yeah, no, it's a CTSV. That's not the STSV. STSV, got it. Stupid Google search. Yeah, that's a smaller one. I always <laughs> always <open> the <laughs> one. <laughs> See, the CTSV to me is that's the second Bad Boys movie. I was in the second Bad Boys movie. Yeah, it was. Really? He, oh, Will shit, Smith is chasing a, a a criminal, and he jumps in. It wasn't a V though. It was just like a regular CTS. He hops in to chase the guy down, and I'm like, what? So okay, but the STS that was the North Star engine, right? That was it wasn't yeah LS. the supercharged yeah it was yeah it wasn't the Corvette motor it was it wasn't LS it wasn't an LS yeah there was the supercharged North Star motor and it had a chip and it. it had a Siemens chip that nobody could break because it was people couldn't fuck with it for some reason because I was trying to chip it to make it go faster. So that's why they haven't taken off because the the first and second gen CTSVs and you know in the drag racing world they're unbelievably easy to just you know run tens like oh, oh yeah almost nothing all day long you don't see any of the sts i mean they didn't make that many stsvs in the first place but yeah mine was mine was like that all black same rim same everything i had that car it was beautiful did it, did it have north star written on the side of it next to the v no it doesn't know next to this v on the on the charge yeah, supercharged? supercharged okay yep. yeah no, that was my, one of my first v forget those exist almost no, you can't. It was just, it, you know, what is 575 or 600, whatever it was, uh, you know, by Ford. Oh, it's so great. I had, I, I've done so much damage in that car. And by the way, I was going to, I was going to keep it, but I beat the holy hell out of it. <laughs> so I was like, whoever gets this is some assholes out there driving it and it's falling to pieces. I always, I was just like, uh, <laughs> it's on a used car lot somewhere in Ohio. It, it is was. not. <laughs> <laughs> It's in, it's in Abu Dhabi in a fucking in a, in a sand dune. <laughs> <laughs> it probably. Oh, I love those it's fucking cars. Funny. So, are we done with Frontier? I think we can. I mean, yeah. It, well, Pathfinder came out too. That's fine. That's I fine. I will say like the notable thing out of it, and it sounds super boring, but it actually matters to me. They ditched the CT or the CVT. That's an improvement. Yeah. Yes. It's it's a- a- for anybody who doesn't give a fuck about Pathfinder, what's a CVT? Uh, constant variable transmission. Continuously variable. Continuously yeah. variable. Yeah. It literally the, is. It's every time you feel like you get to the right spot in the power band and it actually feels good, it shifts. That sounds it's like what, crappy. Continuous. It's what the uh, what the side by sides and all the four wheel drive ATVs use. It's, it's supposed to be more efficient, and it's just they're horrible. Yeah. Good. But they got rid of it. Yes. Yes, they got rid of it. Now it's yeah. a nine-speed auto, but it's not a CVT. It's ZF. It'll be fine. Nobody who drives one of those things daily is going to give more than a single shit about the transmission tuning. <laughs> That's true. 
my my favorite part was like they tried to do like an off road version for the this launch here, and even even the version they did, it was kind of like really guys like that's underwhelming at best like it's literally uh, a rack lights and the tires yeah it, they did it so that they said they could yeah, yeah they're yeah. going after the fucking they're going after the super outback mode outback people with that thing whatever that thing is mm-hmm. yeah that's, they're literally that's... they literally got a chinese built uh, uh fucking <laughs> luggage rack with two little lights on it. yeah i think it's Probably. the same rack they're throwing on the toyota land cruiser heritage editions yeah, that stupid Thule bullshit. It was Yakima. <laughs> Yakima, what a, yeah, whatever. Char- charging Sorry. you Sorry, nine hundred dollars for a three hundred dollar rack. Yeah, oh. we buy used. It's okay. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, uh, uh, let's talk. We can talk about, about Bud now because I already I already showed my tires. <laughs> so yeah, we talked about your crappy grocery getter thing. Ross, <laughs> Ross, hey, that grocery getter gets through the snow. I'm good. Uh, <laughs> There's a supercharger available for it. I just haven't. So one more sidebar. I don't want to care to talk about me. So what, are you going, I mean, is there, what percentage of your body is going to be kind of happy when Tom Brady beats? Because <laughs> <laughs> uh, you, can't oh, fully, you can't fully root against him because if Patrick gets beat, think about it, right? I'm not trying to be complete, you know. No, no, no. I, I, we, I have been having these conversations, so I'm good. If he this. beat, if Patrick beats, I mean, how can you do like, cause it's, it's, it's one of those epic things in sports, right? And I love sports because sports really is storytelling. I don't really care watching some of the shit, but when there's a, when then there's a gauntlet or there's a, this amazing story, like um, I'll give you an amazing story. And this is another one we're talking about. You get amazed. Like when LeBron leaves Miami and says, I'm going back to where I promised people I'm going to win a championship. And then he does it two years later. You're like, exactly. What the hell? And that's, then if Tom Brady. Legacy. Leaves, yeah. But if Tom Brady leaves the, the, the franchise of all franchises, the Patriots says, I'm going to go on my own. And the next year is the Super Bowl. And if that guy wins at 42, mm-hmm. I mean, completely fuck Tom Brady. You're, you're a complete alien asshole. I get it. 43. But, what he's 43 right okay so but he's a complete (laughs) alien asshole but if he does that how can you be mad at him no no i i if garbage team the last few yeah so if tom brady wins seven championships that's more than michael jordan right now the conversation in town is like if tom brady wins we don't think patrick can ever catch him because how long brady has played Right. And, and put like, that's a 20 year career, 21 mm-hmm. year career. Like that's almost impossible to replicate. Like there's no well, one else put, that's doing that. Yeah. But you should put that into your mind. Cause Tom, Tom Patrick Mahomes is never going to catch him anyhow. Cause Patrick's too mobile. Right. Uh, Tom Brady's one claim to fame is he can't run the fucking grocery store. He can't Which, run anywhere. Right? There's, yeah, so there's a hilarious there protection in the world. Patrick Mahomes has more yards in a game than, than Tom Brady has in his entire season. career, right? So <laughs> he's too mobile. He's going to get injured. You can't, there's no way he, that Patrick's going to go for 22 years in the NFL right? playing so, as hard as he does. So the, the fun thing about Patrick is his game isn't his legs. It's just, it's like an added extra right now. Like he's still young and athletic, but like really his game is the vision in the arm. But so there's a fun website that um, there's, yeah. A fun, and you're uh, complete, by the way, you're completely full of shit when you say that you're out of your mind that you go look at the percentage of passes that he makes outside the pocket and by no, the no, way, no, I, i'm not telling you playing. they're not picking him up and carrying him <laughs> outside the pocket he's moving right yeah no you're you're not wrong there but like so there's a fun website it compares quarterbacks so mahomes has played in 46 games brady has played in 299 games brady's career rushing yards is 1043 yards over 21 years right right mahomes in four seasons has 808 holy shit (laughs) but so the fun thing about it though is mahomes has played 15 percent of the games of brady so then you start looking at all of the stats if if he's oh above 15 percent, then he's maybe on pace to catch him right so games one he's at 16 percent. so he's maybe winning more than tom did early so he has got a chance there Dude, that's Pass. all bullshit. Just why don't you just factor in? Let's just factor in how many quarterbacks have played twenty one seasons, and you'll go down to like point point zero zero four, and Mahomes is never going to make it. It doesn't matter. He could be the greatest quarterback in the world for six seasons. Who cares? He's not going to catch him. Can speculate all you want. And Correct. Yeah, the I, likelihood I don't. Of it happening. It's extremely extreme. I agree low. that the likelihood of him playing that long twenty years ago 
doesn't exist, but I think they've changed rules enough now that there is a possibility he gets to 15 years. They have powder puffed it enough. I agree. They, like if, they, yeah, if, you, if yeah. you tap him on the helmet, it's roughing the passer. Like if a finger brushes his helmets, it's roughing the yeah. passer. So like if you hit him below the waist, it's right, which is literally the Tom Brady rule because the Chiefs blew out his it ACL. Is. And what was that, 2016, 2014? Mm -hmm. With Bernard Pollard. If, uh, if Mom game. starts sleeping in one of those uh, cryogenic air chambers or whatever <laughs> yeah. that Brady sleeps in, he's got a lot better Which, chance. The, the nice thing in town is he appears to understand legacy at a crazy young age. Well, when you give a guy a half a billion dollars, you can understand yeah. legacy real quick, right? You give me half a billion dollars, I'd be a much nicer guy too. Well, and, and that's the like Shit, the conversation in town is like, <laughs> he agreed to that deal and like didn't front load. Like it's, uh, it's all, that, that deal is literally designed to just keep pushing money down so they can keep paying, putting other people around it. But he had the forethought to say, it's not just about me. I need to have other people on the team too. So, which explains the one point one point two million dollar house. But have you ever guys had <laughs> <laughs> and the uh, and the eight twelve super fast? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Picked up an eight. Okay, That's... yeah. Did, that was last year. A, have you guys ever had a guest that you've never met before be so combative? Uh, yes. Oh, really? More combative? <laughs> <laughs> not more. I'd say just combative <laughs> yeah uh -huh. and you're not really combative you're just energetic is the way i would put it all right, all right good <laughs> stoking the fire like i haven't my, been offended my, yet <laughs> my teachers used to say that i'll try harder to offend you my teacher, <laughs> he's well, really that's, energetic well that's probably why i'm i'm okay with this because i sp spent a decade teaching middle school like i'm getting throwback right now well, that's exactly <laughs> where i i stopped growing mentally <laughs> mentally and physically <laughs> here's the secret all humans stop growing in middle school. We all lie to ourselves that are like, no, I'm an adult. No, you're just a larger version of your middle school self. But I act like it. So I, I, I have failed to grow up or take any responsibility to do anything. I'm fucking, I'm, I'm 14, all aspects of my life. I don't care. Yeah, but you're finding success somehow. Somehow. It happened. <laughs> 14 so, with more money than you had when you were 14. Exactly. You bought, yeah, you, yes. You yeah. bought, you've had V cards. Something's going right. Oh yeah, no, trust me. I didn't. That, I thought, that, that crossed my mind many times. <laughs> I, you, your audio broke up a little bit. I thought you said you had V cards, not cars. That cars. All V cards. Jesus. Holy shit. <laughs> Anyways, moving on. I used to collect V cards, but that's a whole other issue. <laughs> <laughs> that's a different podcast. <laughs> um, where do you want to start, bud? Because this, like, your resume is fairly extensive. Yeah, it's pretty big. It, it, you know, I do a lot of crazy shit. You can go anywhere you want. Doesn't matter to me. <laughs> Over Holland? That's yeah, I I, I created that. <laughs> Brush off the shoulder. Made that one. <laughs> Go ahead and check that box. <laughs> like that for the longest time, like in the US, that was our best automotive show. Yep. Well, do you know why? Let's talk about that. Do you know why it's your best automotive show? In the US? Because it was the only one that let car enthusiasts actually care about cars for a long time here. Ish. I mean, you know, I talk about that a lot. It, you know, overhaul was a really complex format, right? So the format is you not only care about cars, we made you care about the cars because we made you care about people. People, you know, audience have to understand that, they, you know, the Broncos we redid, the trucks we redid were connected to people. There was a connective tissue between father and son and mother and daughter and my dad died and all this other stuff. So we our storytelling it's not it's not truck you or something else where you're like, I'm putting in a Dana 60 or whatever the hell you're doing. Mm -hmm. um, Just because you know, they can. <laughs> yeah, just because they can, they, you know, that I, I do get a tad bit angry. I have an anger issue anyhow, but I can take it from people like, hey, you, you're you're the car guy and you do car TV. It's like, no, technically I do. I do TV, asshole. I, I really do. Right. <laughs> and tell the fact people's that, stories. Yeah, you tell right. stories. And this happens to be stories that are connected with automotive. Right. But that's those are human stories. Right. Those are connective tissues of our life, how we feel, how we grew up. My dad's Trans Am, my dad's Mustang. My grandfather had this old Bronco. So we were able to tell stories then just to make it super entertaining. And I remember when I created it, I was like, I, I liked, I, I'll tell you this, the inside story. So I, I really, I was watching, I was watching punked right back on MTV was, was it still a channel and, and Ashton Kusher, who I, you know, I appreciate and like him and I was watching punk, but the only thing I didn't like is I was like, these guys are really getting pranked and there's no payoff other than we're all, fucking laughing at you at everybody's ex yeah their at, expense. It, it, yeah your expense like there's no pay, there's no payoff i go that kind of sucks a 
and I'm not that nice of a guy, but it's, it's, it's fairly mean spirited. And you're sitting here with Justin Timberlake and Kanye West and all these people. And they're just like, ha ha, we got you. And so I, I wanted to take that and say, how do I cure that? And that was a big part of it. It's like, I wanted to marry that with like, okay, I'm going to steal your car. I'm going to fuck with you for seven days. Just put you <laughs> Don't worry about it. You can be mad at me if you want, but I'm going to really give you a hundred thousand dollar car at the end of it, or hundred fifty thousand dollar car at the end of it. So you're not going to be mad. Anger is worth it. Oh, absolutely, yeah. I mean, but that was that was for I don't know how many episodes we did it that that way. But I mean, you know, to torture them, beat them down, do stuff, and then give them this thing at the end. It, it was pretty amazing. But, but yeah, that was that's a very big show of ours. That's why I, I couldn't really watch Punked because it was just watching people being fucked with, and I was like, uh, it is, which is hilarious now to think that that's where a top gear america host came from yeah we, we watched shit. i didn't we watched two dax together be on a that. different guy oh. every episode wow. and now he's a top gear america host like i just always felt watching punked like i was waiting for the point when i would realize that i hated one of the people that i thought i would actually like <laughs> which i mean uh. thankfully they were all usually pretty you know well, that's you're you're 100 right. That was a really interesting thing because we did that to some cops and some SEAL team guys too, you know. But you you do put those people in these real situations, and and being the puppet master on a lot of those, you kind of figure out. I was like, yeah, I know. Remember on Punk, like on Stone Stone Cold Steve Austin, like he stuck up for the ballet guy, and he's like, how would you feel if I treated you like that? He just went after somebody, and you're like, those are real moments. We did that with we did that with Marcus Luttrell, one of the baddest fucking SEAL team guys on the planet. We put him in this really awkward situation and that guy is a, is amazing i mean so you should watch the episode because it's like he t- t- he just did something that you you can't teach people and you can't fake right and you want some of those people to go you're like you said you want to go out of their fucking mind and like you know who i am and all this? nothing nothing so, you know, marshall Citro was amazing but yeah it was fun puppet mastering that thing for many many years on the air for 16 years still on the air obviously oh, sure. yeah was he how far uh dang what was marcus a mustang oh yeah yep do you want to know that story it's the craziest story in the planet i found the mustang <laughs> if, it, if you're leading it up like that then you gotta <laughs> yeah we'd have to know now <laughs> oh dude don't no, wait oh that look at that car that's so amazing like so i'll tell you the story stuff. it's mind-blowing by the way the, the story is mind-blowing so i i i got wind i got wind from a friend of mine a friend of mine that marcus had a truck that was sitting on his farm in texas <clears throat> Um, that may want to be overhauled. So I contacted his brother and they said, hey, you got to call his brother. So I call his brother, Morgan. I say, hey, Morgan, this is Bud, blah, 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 blah. This is what I want to do. And his brother said, no, I, I don't want you to do that truck. Um, so anybody know his brother? Anybody know Marcus Luttrell's brother? Don't look it up. Hold on, over here, over here. No, no, that's all I do is look up stuff. <laughs> no, no, look, look at me. Okay, so I want you to think about this. Marcus Luttrell is a six foot four, 255 pound, Navy SEAL, right? Complete, complete badass. Watch the movie, go study it, read his book, Lone Survivor. It's amazing, right? <clears throat> um, he's got a twin brother. There's fucking two of them. Identical twin. <laughs> fucking two of them. Not joking. That's... You can look it up now. His name's Morgan, right? <sighs> There's two of them. I didn't see that going. Holy shit, right? But let me tell you the story. This is why it's mind-blowing and good. And by the way, so they got a, they got a, they got a Triton. Anybody know what a Triton is? As in like a three-pronged fork? Okay, no. Jack. Or, this, right. or the seal <laughs> logo. <laughs> yeah, it's a seal logo, right? So they have a trident uh, <laughs> tattooed on their backs. One half has the right wing and the other half of the brother has the left wing, right? Because they're both seal team guys, both of them. There they are. Oh right? my fucking God. They don't look small. Oh no, they're big dudes. Marcus <laughs> is on the left, Morgan's on the right. They're big, big dudes, right? And so Morgan on the right, he says... Uh, he goes, you can't do the truck. I'm like, well, I really want to do something. I, I'm a big SEAL team fanatic, and I really appreciate these guys. You know, what can we do? He goes, I'm, I'm working on a um, 67, 68 Mustang for my brother. I'm like, well, I, I, I'd rather have some kind of commotion. You, know, you know, in my show, we have to, because I always have to talk to people. In my show, we always have to have a, a connective tissue or an emotional issue. It's got to have a backstory. He says, okay. Um, calls you back. And it says, you have a minute to talk. Morgan calls him back. SEAL team guy. They're really serious, scary, creepy dudes, right? Um, sorry, Morgan. I didn't mean to call you creepy. Call me. Um, <laughs> so he says this. He goes, when my, my, me and my brother, so Marcus and Morgan show, we're 10 years old. We made a bet. We made a bet. This is what they said to me. 
It's like, we made a bet. Okay. What's the bet? It's like, when we turn 40 years old, 40 years old, they're 10. When we turn 40 years old, whoever is the poorest of the two brothers, right? So they're identical twins, physically able, same household, same school, same football team, same everything. So we're going to go out in life. Whoever is the poorest out of the two brothers has to buy the more successful brother, the car of his dreams. Okay. That's what they said. High stakes. And the high stakes. So it's like, so if you become more successful than I do, I owe you a car of your dreams. And they decided when they're like 10 or 14, I forgot what the, the whole start of it, but um, they decided that the car of their dream is going to be an Eleanor, right? So that's whatever it is. So it's going to be an Eleanor Mustang. So lo and behold, Morgan, who's a fucking stud and, and literally, uh, you know, is went out and bought a Dynacorn body 68 and was working on it on a shop kind of putting, he had no money. He's a student, just got out of the SEAL team. So he's now, he's out of SEAL team. He's going to student and he somehow doesn't want to Welsh on this bet with his brother. And he's going to build this fucking Eleanor car for his brother. <laughs> and so I, I call and I listen to this story. I'm like, you gotta be fucking kidding me. If you're making this up, I swear I'll, I'll do whatever I can to beat your ass, but I can't do it. But okay. <laughs> so you're telling me you and your brother made a pack 30 years ago. It's coming up this November. Whoever is the most, successful gets a car from the fucking poor brother and he goes that's what i'm telling you i said okay i'll do it we went down to texas got the car drug it up here chip designed what he you know we put a lot of elements in there with seal team and all this other stuff into it and then uh we we pranked the hell out of uh of marcus and we gave him that car so that that story is like that's oh. crazy but that's what story is right it's not the story of the car the car is beautiful right the story is two brothers one of them was if you haven't seen the movie, you know, 15 seconds from be, be, being headed, being beheaded. Being beheaded. Is that Say a sentence? That 20 sure. times. It can fast. be. Yeah. He, he was about to be beheaded <laughs> in Afghanistan, right? Whatever it is, got, got saved by a goat herder, all this other shit. He's alive and he's here. He was shot and stabbed and all this other shit. And now you're going to make good on a bet you made 30 years ago. And we that's get true. the opportunity to tell that story, right? But that's what TV is. That's what real TV is. That's what I sucked definitely. you in the cars are just the means for telling the story. Absolutely. Yeah. They're not the story. It's just, yeah, yeah. it's eye candy. In it's a story literally like the that. vehicle. The vehicle to tell the story. Yeah. See, you're, that's five yeah, point pun. yeah. That's good. One point for man bun. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> man so, bun's better than ponytail. So <laughs> not really. <laughs> can't say either is good. <sighs> That's wild. So I was curious as to how far into the show, how many seasons or episodes were you that the people who were being pranked for the show were starting to catch on? Was there a point where, where they kind of knew like a turning point that shifted the kind of way the show operated or you just rolled with it? Yeah. So we did 12 seasons, about 136, 140 episodes. Um, and, uh, we never got caught. We never found, no one ever found That's out about it. Right? Unbelievable. it. It's crazy. I mean, and the, and here's, you got to remember that we, we, we started the show in 2002. So, you know, it has gone through there. You got to think about what's going on in 2000 from 2002 till now, right? 18 years of, of craziness. There are in, in subsequent seasons, later seasons, we did change how we operate, but I, I pride myself very adamantly, And I'll talk to anybody about it. Like we know, no one ever said, Hey, stop. This is, I mean, this we're on overhaul and now we almost got found out a few times that we were fake cops or we were this or we were that but <clears throat> there was a lot of thought process and if you haven't oh my god if you haven't seen the uh, uh i just recently we did we did um in the last season we did chip and chris and old man makeup when we stole this this shelby mustang holy, holy shit. god it was fucking funny as hell it was it was the greatest it was seriously but we put a lot of thought into it it really wasn't just you know guy in a meter made outfit talking shit i mean we we put a lot of time and effort into mm -hmm. in disguising it and creating it in real and i want to get too far into it but there's a psychological um a certain couple psychological things you have to do to make make a scenario like that believable and we kind of stuck to that and it worked we've never never been found out hmm. that's wild probably couldn't have guessed that was going to go that way when you started <laughs> No, and by the way, you know when when the show would get up, and you know when Velocity came back, because my the show I, it's it's kind of a running joke, and I'm I'm waiting for a call any minute. But we've been canceled like four times. This is it's, it's 
it's kind of the family guy scenario they cancel you and the fans are like what the fuck you doing and so every time discovery wants to you know launch i mean we get canceled and then like hey we're doing an automotive channel do you want to bring back the show sure like hey we're launching this do you want to i'm waiting to call any minute because our fan base is so big and it's this one of these you know you've been you you, i don't want to say i'm like roseanne but maybe roseanne without the racism and stuff like that but you (laughs) The fan loves it. It's something familiar. You kind of bring it back and every, it's got brand equity in it and you can't build something like it. And then Chip is such, Chip Foose is such an amazing talent. Um, and I, I, I revel in those calls just because they're, I don't know, they, they, they're so, they're so inspiring sometimes because you get canceled, right? And those are terrible moments. You get canceled by one set of executives and then they all get fired and like you wait like a year and a half and then the new executives like, Hey, do you want to come back in? Sure. And then you like, literally I call Chip and Chris and AJ. I'm like, Hey, do you guys want to go do it? And then we go do it again. It's great. So it's been, it's been amazing. I mean, it seems like a good time with the way automotive media is going. Like people are gobbling that shit up more now than ever. Well, cause now we have a choice, right? It's us. You know, we, we program, yeah. we're, not, we're not waiting, you know, idiots and Nielsen rating to program and tell us what we want to see. We program and we, we you know, vote with our eyeballs. Mm-hmm. That's a very good point. Can I, can I guess if your calls from Motor Trend? Yeah. <laughs> no, I've already had that call. No, I've already had that call. Okay. Really? Oh no, yeah. When Motor Trend launched, uh, yeah, that was the last season. Motor Trend launched. We just, I mean, they were want. No, that was. Uh, yeah, it was like we just did it last year. We finished it 2020. Yeah, 2019. They called me saying we're launching the Motor Trend app, and we want you guys to be a big part of it. Or not even the app. It was on the linear side. And that was the, that was one of the last calls. It was Alex. I, we got canceled by uh, a bunch of people at Velocity um, without naming names and hurting feelings. And then fucking Velocity gets tanked and goes away. Motor can get stood up. And I just sat there looking at my phone. Sure enough, it rings. There it is. Like, hey, you got a lot of brand equity here. I'm like, yep, we do. We come back. Sure. So it's great. Could have scripted it just like it's, like it's so yeah it's not that easy but it, it here's the thing it feels good it sucks to be canceled you know i'll give you an example i'll, I'll give you an example maybe maybe you guys can identify or maybe like it's like getting dumped by a girl and then like six or seven months later she decides that she made a mistake and she calls you back and you go for one more romp right <laughs> so you're like, yeah like you're like you win you're not you don't feel like a dirt bag you're not feel like a piece of trash if someone kicked to the curb mm-hmm. but imagine that happened to you four or five times you got to have your head examined <laughs> keep on bringing the bitch back right speaking of the call (laughs) is mav tv still a thing um it is yeah lucas lucas bought mav uh, mav tv was started by a friend of mine named steven um and then lucas bought it and then they've done some wacky things to it i'm not sure what they're doing yeah they don't really they don't really program that much um it looked like all motorsport now like almost like it looks like every junior series you can think of is on mav tv right now yeah it's, it's, it's all lucas. not a single show no it's all lucas oil i mean uh bob patterson and his son um bought it and we're actually when lucas bought it then bob patterson and his son took it over i'm not sure what's going to happen to it you know it now still around for it now. Is. yep all right let's get in some stuff sorry i, I just got a no, call you're good. uh yeah <laughs> where do you... Everest it's where, to stay up, where to go? How do you how do you produce a show on Everest? I don't I don't fucking know, but I decided to do it right. So I, <laughs> I figured I I figured that uh, it, it was it was kind of, I'm not even joking about this. It's kind of my fuck you to Hollywood, right? So I figured, and I could, I could do that. I could show you some photos. Um, you could pull them up. But, uh, you know, I decided if I could if I could produce a TV show, you know, for four and a half months on Everest, right? That we could do anything in the world, right? Because the logistics are crazy. We legitimately had, and I have a hundred photos of, we have Pelican cases that are that are roped and tied to yaks and the yaks are taking them up the mountain, with us, right? <laughs> and I'm sitting and it's got million dollar camera equipment and we got stuff in it. And we are like, oh my, oh my God, what planet are we on? How do you so, recruit videographers for something like that? No, you hire them a, there. No, well, well, we we trained some of the high altitude work and some of the Sherpas to shoot for us at some of the some of the higher base camps. But honestly, you're 100 percent right. Um, this is an interesting thing for anybody who anybody who doesn't train, anybody who smokes, and anybody who drinks too much, or anybody who doesn't take care of themselves. I mean, people have choices. 
I had, I didn't take my normal crew, my LA crew. Um, I really had to take, and I had to be very careful. I mean, I hate, you're not, you know, a lot of the, a lot of the bullshit rules go out the window when you can die. Right. So I didn't want to bring older yeah. people. I didn't want to bring people who smoked and I didn't, I didn't want to bring anybody who had heart conditions or anything like that. You had to be young and fit. So, um, I recruited some high out, some guys who were action photographers out of Australia. I've, I've talked to people who've done stuff in elevation and I hired some people at elevation. We brought another guy in. We had like three or four shooters from Australia. I did bring uh, a couple of my younger shooters here from LA. Um, a couple of them had to be evacuated and, uh, and almost died and got them out. Oh yeah. That's us. Oh, that's yeah. That's uh Jeff Evans is our medic in the middle. Um, and, uh, Purpley really want to point out the guy in the far right, David uh, Mingma, that's Mingma um, in the, in the, in the green. Absolutely. One of the greatest mountaineers in the history of the world. That guy has, has summited more mountains than just about anybody. And he is awesome. Two weeks ago, he, 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 he did the first, uh, the first uh, summit of uh, winter summit of K2. Oh, Jesus. Yeah, that, yeah. That guy's really? unbelievable. Yeah. There's never been a winner, uh, a winner summit of K2 and that guy did it. So yeah, every stair, the, you know, I want, you know, we talked a little about storytelling. I, I can tell you the genesis and that's maybe sometimes people, you know, if I have, if any, if any cocktail stories, I can tell the genesis of that was very simple. I was reading a story in a magazine, promise you, this sounds really old school, but I was reading a story in a magazine kind of about, kind of about the separation and the honor among climbing teams, right? So when you go there, you usually have, just to set the table for a second, you have four or five Sherpas up front, four or five Sherpas behind, you got, well, let, let's for sake of argument, you know, 10, 10 climbers in the middle and all these climbers in the middle have paid money, have trained, allegedly trained hard. <laughs> paid more money, trained. Yeah, paid more money, trained more less, money. which by the way has happened. You're like, can you carry me? How much to pay you to carry me? Um, have paid money. And you, you kind of at low altitude, this is important, at low altitudes or today, we'll make a pact. Like, okay, we're all going to go together. We're gonna, no one's going to die. We're going to be a team. We're going to do this, right? And then what happens is halfway up camp two, camp three, if you've invested hundreds of thousands of dollars, tons of your time, you've already gone through the Kumbu ice fall. You've already got the camp one. You've done rotations. And then you're at camp two or camp three and one of your boys gets sick. Um, what do you do? Right. Well, the agreement normally is like, hey, we're going to go down. We've got to take care of our boy. Or if you get, you know, or you he gets escorted down with a couple of Sherpas and the next morning you go back up. Well, you just endangered your team. Right. right. You just now you all of a sudden you have less, less, less oxygen. You get two or three less Sherpas. People are double timing. It's you just put your team at risk. And, you know, a lot of people get left up there. There's 246 bodies on Everest. If people don't know that, you can pull them up right now. There's 246 bodies on Everest. They're, they're, they're there. And they're starting to show up more and more. Occasion, uh, depends on the, depends on the weather cycles. Yeah, sometimes right. they show up, sometimes they don't. Yeah. Um, anyhow, long story short is like, you know, I really wanted to create a rescue force that would, and by the way, this didn't, didn't, didn't go too well in the beginning, but I really want to create a, a rescue force with the sole purpose. All right. So instead of leading an expedition where I go and, and risk everybody's lives and people risking their lives to, so I can have glory. And if I can tell people the cocktail party that, Hey, I climbed Everest, look at me. I'm a, I'm a big guy. Right. Which is not my, definitely not my goal in life to, for these, these kind of, you know, single accomplishments like that. No disrespect to the 2000 people that have summited, but that's just not where I wanted to be. So I went there with the sole mind of like, okay, we're going to go there and rescue people, right? When our goal is not to summit, mm -hmm. our goal is to bring medics, helicopters, resources. I hired an entire Sherpa team, which I promise you, nobody does. I, I hired the best Sherpas in the planet. I had them all, right? And if anybody wants to comment and talk about it, you can comment and talk about it, right? The greatest mountaineer in the history of the world right now is a guy named Nims, and he was on our team. Um, and he, he just did 14... He summited all 14, 8,000 8, 8, meter peaks in seven months, right? The previous record was seven years. Mingma, Lakpa, Ninja, Baila, there were, I mean, we had the seven great months. <laughs> seven months. All 14, all 14, 8,000 meter peaks. He did it in seven months. Holy shit. He's, oh, he's, he's, he's an animal. He's an SAS officer. He's amazing. Anyhow, so we hired this team and I tell you, so it was like we, we created this thing called, you know, uh, Alpine Rescue Service. And 
it's very funny. We started talking to people in Kathmandu. We're like, and we, we could, you know, you can spy, you can see people that are climbers or like, Hey, you're a climber. Great. Here's what we're doing. We tell them what we're doing. It's like, Hey, we're going to go. Um, we have a rescue team. We have a doctor. We have unlimited. We have two high altitude helicopters. Um, and we have some of the best Sherpas around that'll be flopping in, in, in going back in rotation. We have decks, we have ropes, we have sleds, we have everything. And we would talk to these climbers down in Kathmandu. And it's like, we're here to rescue if you guys have a problem. And they'd all look at us like we were idiots. They're like, what are you talking about? We're, we're professional climbers. We're not going to get sick. Like, okay, jackass, whatever. So I was like, and then we got, we got, <laughs> yeah, like, okay, just, you want my, you want my number? Call me. Um, but yeah, a lot of the guys were like, no, get out. And we would go, we went to base camp and we got the Everest base camp. We would go to camp to camp and start having a conversation with people. And by the way, there are, there are people that aren't arrogant fucking idiots who are like, oh shit, that's a good idea. It's no, no big deal. No harm, no foul. If you have AAA in your phone program, it's, you're, you're, not a, you're not a pussy, right? You know, it's like, if you get in trouble, let us know. There was a SEAL team guy. Um, I'm not going to call his name up, but there's a SEAL team guy. He's a little bit older. And I talked, I talked to him and he got sick at camp two and got evac'd out. Right. So it's, it's not really under your, your control. You get sick, you, something happens, you eat something and your body starts to, you know, going into, into shock and something starts to happen. You want to get out. Well, guess what? If we're not there, you're in big trouble. You're in big trouble. Your only, your only way to live is to get down an elevation. And the normal way to get down an elevation is grab two of your Sherpas and start walking. Right. And that's, that's a huge task there. Cause now you're, now you're in big trouble or you can call my phone and I'll come get you. And, take <laughs> you. and it's, it's just wacky. So we went through that whole thing. So at the end of the day, long story is it turned out to be obviously very, I mean, it's on discovery plus right now. I was really happy to see when they launched discovery plus there's my show Everest air. So if anybody's got discovery plus, if not, go get it, hit Everest air and you'll see what I mean. I spent, you know, four and a half months, in the in in the Himalayas and putting on this rescue force, we we uh, we did 38 rescues out of all the people, right? <laughs> out of all the all these people who don't need our help, we did 38 rescues, and you know without even bolstering, we we probably saved seven lives without a doubt. There'd be there's an end. We did the highest highest altitude rescue in his, history, which is like 28,500 feet. <laughs> um, what? Holy shit. Yeah, she this, uh, her her name is Seema. I, she sent us a Christmas card. She, she has no fingers. Uh she she this is a crazy story. I so can tell you. 500 feet from the summit kind of thing, like yeah, an elevation. Oh yeah, she she was she was down there right by right by it's, I think it was by the Hillary step. Uh, obviously, I didn't go rescue her, but uh oh, there's a funny story about that too. Uh <laughs> And it was so funny because I, I think they forgot that we had GoPros on them. It's so funny. I'll tell you that story. So um, she gave up, right? She, I, and I love Seema. She's a very nice lady. I haven't seen her in three or four years, right? But she was kind of a, a middle-aged teacher, mom, housewife. And in India, and she's from India, in India, um, climbing Mount Everest is one, like one of the greatest things you could ever do in your life. So her and her husband decided to go climb Mount Everest. Um, and... They got when they got to the Hillary step, right around right, right around the Hillary step, and maybe a little bit above. She she ended up quitting. She just says, "I'm done. I stop. I'm, I can't do this anymore." And she sat down. Right, <clears throat> so she sat down. Then her husband, um, her husband, and then that's this is the unfortunate thing, and this happened multiple times right up there. You got two choices: either you go to Camp Four or you sit here and you die with your wife. You don't have much of a choice. You could say goodbye, and that happened. He left. Right? He didn't have a choice, right? You know, some of us would just sit there, you know, the, the Titanic's a beautiful movie, but it doesn't happen that fucking often. Um, so he, he intelligently, because if, you know, we'll try to help her, her Sherpa was stayed with her. The other Sherpa took her husband down and now you're in this shit scenario, like the worst scenario you can. The husband, so the husband gets down to camp four and he is losing his fucking mind but because his wife is up on the Hillary step, literally, you know, 500 steps from the, from the, from the top of the summit. Yeah, that's right there. She's at the Hillary step. Uh, and there's camp four. And that's a pretty heavy grade. So he gets down to camp four and starts screaming about his wife being left up there, wiping up there. They call us. We're down at base camp. They call us and say, hey, there's a girl at the Hillary step. Can you guys go get her? We're like, holy shit. And by the way, it's the worst time at night, right? You should not be. Is that night? 
Oh yeah, you know, by the time that but they 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 had a summit team to try to go summit in the morning. She sat there all day. So they get that they get down to camp four, takes him half to half the day to camp four. So probably by three, four o'clock in the afternoon, which is the single biggest no-no in the history of climbing. You don't you don't go to the summit of Mount Everest at four o'clock in the afternoon. Just it, it's death ridden, right? It is the the dumbest thing in the world. And we, uh, you know, I have to make a decision. Easy for me to make, right? Because I'm just, I'm just on the radio um, to send two of our Sherpas up to go get her, right? Can you go get this lady? Are you sure she's there? And the other Sherpa's like, yeah, she's there. She's there. <clears throat> the other Sherpas are already spent, right? So I, you know, one of the things we have is we don't have, our Sherpas don't have responsibility to, to guide people. They're not burnt. They're not anything. They're like, they're hanging out at camp four, just waiting for something to happen. So I send, I send Mingma. And I send uh, probably uh, Mima and Lakba and Ninja to go get her, right? And this is the funny, there's all kinds of funny stuff about this. So Mima, I said, okay, put your GoPro on. We're talking on the radio, grab a GoPro and get up there, right? Which I like, I'm saying, go walk over there. It generally, and these guys are so bad. It'll generally take someone five, six hours, maybe four hours. I don't want to exaggerate out in the exact time. These guys were up, these guys were up there in 45 minutes. But the funny, <laughs> bang, bang, bang. and the holy the funniest thing and i have the footage still it's so mingma has a gopro on him and i can hear him talking and i swear to god this is what he's saying he's like god damn motherfucking fucking fucking <laughs> motherfucking <laughs> every, just, that's all he's doing just cussing and talking and cussing and talking and you you can hear him breathing heavy and he's just pissed off like who sends someone literally to the summit of the world at seven or eight o'clock at night by the time we got it it probably helped him power that. through it all oh he was pissed the, he was, but like there's that part of your brain like when you're using cuss words it helps you deal with more shit like 100%. you can get more yeah. done so they get to her they pull their auction it off they take her auction they crank it up as high as they can they start talking to her right and the the, the trick that they did they start calling her mama like, hey, mama, we got to get you down. Mama, we got to get you down. We got to get the. And she was just sitting there, honestly, sitting there, catatonic, just kind of sitting there. Her ass is already frostbitten. She has major issues with that. Her hands are frostbitten. Her toes are frost. She's got Indian music playing, and she's just total. She's it. She's done. She was she, conscious and everything. Yeah, yeah, she was conscious, barely, barely conscious, but she was gone. I mean, losing it. Mm -hmm. So they got her warmed up. Get him to stand. He started getting him to circulate. Um, they, they took their auction and off, they put the auction on her and they're like, mama, we got to move mama. We got to move. You got to remember these guys are not big. They're little dudes. They're 120 yeah. pounds. They're, they're five foot two, 120 pounds. They're not picking her ass up and walking her down <laughs> the top of the world. So they basically got to coax her to like one step in front of the other. They fucking got her down to camp four. And then they walked her down to camp three. And then we picked her up at a place called Crampon point, 23,500 feet right at the bottom of, of uh, Lotsi. And we picked her up and I met my helicopter pilot that said that the husband and wife, so Seema and her husband were at the, sitting there at the bottom of camp three at the base of camp, Crampon Point. And she, she was conscious enough at that point. So she says, no, you stay, you take the next one. She wouldn't let her husband on the helicopter. She's <laughs> like, <laughs> she's like, fuck you. Yeah. So we got here. There's a bunch of footage of the whole thing, the whole rescue. It was probably the last rescue we did of the year. We got her down. Uh, we got her to from uh, 23,500, got her down to base camp, flew her from base camp into uh, Lukla, and then got her to the hospital, and she survived. Holy um, shit. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, it, yeah it's ridiculous. I mean, that, that was the whole series. It was, that, was, that was my life for four years. That's insane. fucking crazy. Yeah, so insane. Did, did you have to modify the helicopters, or were they were... – like that's where my mind went to is like normally when you talk about Everest, you're like, well, the helicopters can't fly there because the air is too thin. Like, yeah, that's that's it. It, it was part of my research and, the, and kind of a big misconception, right? So the B3E Eurocopter, which I think is Eurocopter now, I think, but the, the B3E helicopter uh, can fly to the tip of Everest empty, right? Okay. Yeah. So we, we have to empty the we have to empty all the seats out. You know, Pilot get, and nothing else, right? Yeah, just the pilot, empty everything out. We were pulling seats out. We were doing all, if we knew, we knew we, I mean, we were going for a high altitude rescue. We're pulling shit out of there. Everything you could possibly out of there. Everything, everything's completely out. Yeah, that's a, that's a B3. You can tell it's got the turbo on the back of it. So these, these are the ones you see in like every snowboarding video of like yeah, teenagers yeah. piling out the yeah. side and going. Yeah, that's a B3 helicopter, Eurocopter. Cool. So those, um, but here's the interesting thing is that it, 
uh, there's an interesting thing timing wise that happened. And I want to talk about that because that, that allowed us to produce our show. Um, and I probably could screw up the timing by, by 12 or 13 months, but it doesn't really matter. I don't really care because it, it happened. So it's fine. So, um, I think it was 2011, uh, let's see, 14, 15, 14, 15. Yeah. So 2011, 2012, Eurocopter, in order to promote that particular helicopter, they strip it down and they land on the tip of Everest with a skid, right? There's a video of it. He, it might've been 2012, 2013, right? So they said, here's our new helicopter. Very, very capable, <clears throat> can land on the, and set, it set a skid on the top of Mount Everest, right? So all of a sudden now high altitude rescues are very capable because prior to that, it, you know, you really, you could get the base camp and back, but you can't really, you can't go to camp one, camp two, or definitely can't go into camp three. So a couple of things have happened. So they, I think it was around 2013, they launched that thing. All right. So now high altitude rescues are highly capable. 2014, there was an avalanche at Everest and climbing was abandoned. 2015, they had another um, earthquake, um, yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that's another B3E. That's, uh, that looks like, uh, yeah, that's a little town called Gorshep. So that's Gorshep, which is kind of a hotel, little resort. It has a coffee tea house in it. That's a really cool place. This little brown mountain right in front of it's called Kalapatar. Uh, Everest is the black mountain in between. It looks like it's smaller, but that should be Everest right there. How far up is this? Um, 19,500. Jesus Christ. <laughs> What the fuck? Yeah, the tallest <laughs> mountain, just for reference, for people who don't climb, the tallest mountain in the United States is 14,000 feet. Yeah. <laughs> right. So that's like, it's like you're at 14,000 feet. You're 500 feet above that. Um, anyhow, long story short, so there was, a, there was a couple really catastrophic events on Everest in 15 and 16, um, which has also led to one of the reasons why I, I'm, like, I'm reading all the stuff in, in uh, I'm sorry, in 14 and 15, there was a major avalanche. Um, that cracked off and then there was a huge earthquake that also cracked something off and killed a bunch of people at base camp. So now we have, and then the government um, of Nepal magically said, okay, well, we'll still honor your 14 and 15 climbing thing. So now all of a sudden I'm going to have a hu huge influx of climbing up there. There's a pent up um, demand. we got these helicopters that now can fly to that elevation um, that really didn't have an opportunity to do high altitude rescue because there was no climbing at that point. So now is the kind of the confluence of the right time to do it. Too much information, I know, but that's just by no. Now. That's I mean, that's that's absolutely. Wild. Actually, so they just they literally just doubled up on how many permits they had for. Oh shit! Yeah, yeah. Climbs. We had a lot. There was a lot of people because you know I, I can't believe that many people wanted to go back after that many people died. If you haven't seen the footage at, uh, of that avalanche at Everest in fourteen, holy crap! And being there, so let me tell you that uh, you know it doesn't really mean anything, right? But so you're in it, when you're when you're in the coom. Uh, which is called the Kumbu Icefall and the Kumbu uh, mm -hmm. Glacier. You sit, you live on a glacier, and you're surrounded by the Himalayas, right? So China's right over the other side of the mountain, and and you have Nupsi, um, Lhotse, and Everest, and you're sitting in this bowl, right? This interesting little bowl and base camps right right here. Every night, and this happened every night, four or five times a night. Um, I, I I I I don't I don't because I listen to it. I, I kind of coin this little thing it's called the sympathy sympathy of zippers you'll hear an avalanche right rock avalanche is pretty close far away avalanche you're kind of thinking about it and you hear them just and it sounds like it's, it's undescribable what it sounds like when an avalanche crash. but it happens four or five times a night while you're in your bed while you're in your tent sleeping and and you don't and what i relied on is the more experienced climbers, when they hear something and it sounds like it's a little too close or a little too big, you'll hear zip, zip. And that happens. I mean, it happens like, I don't know, like locusts in a fucking field, like zip, zip all the way. Cause there's a thousand people at base camp and you start hearing it. So if they're, they're getting out, so you zip, throw on your jacket, put in your shoes, you look around and you try to take cover. Right. But there's taking cover from an avalanche coming this way or an avalanche coming this way or whatever way you want. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, that's base camp. I'm assuming Everest is behind us the way this picture is taken. Yeah, you're kind of looking down. Yeah, you're kind of looking down towards uh, down towards Kalapatar and, and uh, Kalapatar is on your right. Yeah, you're looking down towards. How long does it take to get just to base camp? Um, eleven to thirteen days walking. Jesus. 
Yeah, you have to walk there. It's a it's it's called a trek, but it's it's I don't know what the fuck that means. It means it's yeah. fucking trek. Walking. Trek is just long fucking walk. Like yeah, it's a long, long, long fucking walk, right? Do you know why you have to walk there? Anybody know that? No. My Everest knowledge is very limited. Um so you have to walk there for acclimatization. You can't just drop off there. It's so high. Mm. You basically start at 9,000 feet at, at Lukla. You fly into Lukla. And then basically it takes 11 days, 12 days, depending on how many rest days you take. And you're getting your body acclimatized. You go up, you come back down, you rest for a day, you go back up, you come back down. And basically, and I'll give you the, the fun little scientific term, you're basically tricking your hemoglobins, in, which are inside your bone marrow, to create more red blood cells to carry more oxygen for your body, so you don't get huh. con- climate sickness. So the acclimatization is: I'm getting my body used to this incre- incredibly stupid thing that I'm about to do. <laughs> that's wild. Yeah, it's fun. That makes sense, but it's why, it's why we talk about something you don't, about. I mean, yeah. you don't think about. I mean, yeah, you're like I, I do a lot of love yeah. that would never cross my mind. <laughs> yeah I it's also it. why when i drive to colorado i'm completely fine but when i flew from florida to denver or to salt lake city i totally got out altitude sickness. sea level to the mountains was not a good idea in one day it does happen you get a little tired a little lethargic i mean but yeah that this is a little more extreme than, than going from yeah that to five thousand a little feet. bit yeah so little. i'm i'm pivoting because it's my favorite <clears throat> thing i think you've been a part of i want okay. to i, I want to talk about dust of glory okay or dust to glory since yeah. it was the second one too yeah the second one yeah yeah the second one so it really, it really wasn't my plan but what do you want to talk about I'll, well because you were I, you've already been a part of the scene in baja by then because in 2008 like dust of glory came out in what 2011 uh 2004 really 2004 2005 mm-hmm. yeah is what it, when i google it 2005 man i felt like i watched that like why would you fucking doubt me no, I, I mean, I. What year is it? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Ross and I are having a moment right now because I felt. I mean, I. Yeah, makes I me just, wonder when the last time I actually sat down and watched it straight through is. So uh, yeah, we'll talk about. It. So I mean, two thousand. I was racing in two thousand four, two thousand five, and you're right. When when Dana Brown did the original Dust of Glory, it was mind blowing. You sit and watch that thing, you're like, holy crap! And so, yeah, I've already been racing at that time in in Baja for close to ten years, and then I have then I I started my a very close relationship with Score. Um, you know, doing all the media and all the stuff and commercials and, and filming all the, C, the CBS shows and, and NBC shows and now uh, ESPN shows. For him. And, and Roger and I, who's the owner of SCORE, got together and we want to do something big, right? We really want to do something very, very big. And I'm like, okay, well, I can't, I can't replicate Dust of Glory because it was so amazing. How, how do you do that? Fantastic. Yeah, how do you do that? So I, I didn't even, that wasn't even thought in my head. So I was, I was going down, you know, because I'm obviously, you know, from my background, I'm just, I'm an idiot. So I was going down the, uh, I was going down the IMAX route, right? So I was meeting okay. with IMAX people and I'm like, let's get these 70 millimeter cameras and hook them on a trophy truck. And every person I was talking to, I'm like, God, you know, come on, the technology had to be better now. You can get... And I was getting a lot of pushback and I was getting, you know, I was getting, I was talking to distributors and they're like, how many five-year-old, how many seven-year-old kids do you think will watch an hour and a half documentary about Baja? I'm like, why? They're like, because we primary, you know, we, we, distribute our films on whales and stuff like that and kids yeah. science and they, centers science centers and they run for and the reason why they make because i was looking at some of the revenue because i'm an idiot right i was like like oh 160 million dollars this is amazing like well yeah <laughs> you know, jupiter the movie made 160 million dollars because it ran at the science center in new york for 22 years or something. <laughs> Yeah. And they rotate like I've seen those. Yeah, eight we all have. Yeah, exactly right. Yeah. So yeah, my 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 business mind was all screwed up on that one because I just want to make it. I wanted to make an amazing film. So there was a super chance meeting um, that was set up that, and I almost didn't go. Yeah, in my Cadillac STSV, I almost didn't go. <laughs> um, so it was. It was